All right, so this is the video you've been looking for to convince yourself not to drop $1,400 on this ground. First off, I just wanna say, if you haven't checked out my top five best things about this drone, definitely go check that out because this drone, honestly, is pretty freaking incredible and there's a lot of really great things about it. It's not perfect for everyone and there is flaws like any new piece of technology, but after you're done watching this, make sure you go check out that. But with that said, let's get into reason number one. And that's because right off the bat, at least as of the recording of this video, if you buy the Fly More Combo, you don't even get a normal controller. I'm not really sure where the decision came from to release this drone with just the motion controller and not a normal FPV controller, but it's super frustrating and that's one of the number one things I've seen people complain about. You can choose from two different combos with different DJI headsets, but you don't get the option to add a normal controller. You can buy the drone itself, so if you do already have the first DJI FPV, you can use that same controller, but unless you do have that, you're gonna have to either wait a really long time to get it because it's super backlogged on DJI's website or just get lucky and find one secondhand. I expect that to change as we get further and further away from the release date, but as of now, it's super frustrating for someone who just wants to get an FPV drone, get in the air and flying, and you don't even have a normal controller for it. And this is coming from someone who actually enjoys using the motion controller. I tried it for the first time this year, and I was pretty surprised at how much I liked it. It's super fun and intuitive, and especially with the new goggles, the clarity is amazing and it's super immersive. But there's certain shots that you just literally can't get with the motion controller. For example, orbiting someone or doing flips, diving a mountain, stuff like that. You just don't have the freedom and flexibility you get with a normal controller. So I totally recommend that you try it out if you get the chance, but this decision is just kind of weird to me. I want to say it's because they have a giant warehouse somewhere with a bunch of motion controllers just sitting there and they needed to get rid of them. Mitchell, I found the diapers. They're over here. Cameron, guess what I found? Coffins. They sell baby formula and they sell coffins. You can literally buy everything you need from birth to death. Oh my God. But I definitely think they just should have given people the option. All right, so number two is just the fact that this drone is a Cinewhoop. So you're not gonna get the same performance that you'd get from a normal five inch drone, like the first DJI FPV or this one here, which is a, whoa, which is a Nazgul. The DJI Avada and these more powerful drones are just made for different things. This drone is great for flying indoors and close to subjects. And it honestly has really good handling for being a Cinewhoop. But if you're trying to dive mountains or do a bunch of freestyle tricks or go like 60 miles an hour chasing a sports car, this drone is definitely not the right one for you. It was designed for slower stuff, and it's really good at that. I wouldn't really look at this drone as an upgrade to the previous drone, it's just a different body style, which I'm actually super stoked that DJI is doing, because in traditional FPV, it's been that way for forever. There's bigger Cinelifter drones, there's seven inch long range drones, there's these small five inch ones, and there's tiny little micro drones, so it's really cool seeing DJI kind of expand their fleet. If you wanna check out a video that I shot on this drone, you can click here. And that is really the drone that I recommend if you're trying to go more freestyle and get a faster, more powerful drone. Next up, I just wanna talk about this weird bug that's been happening to me. I, I'm not sure if I'm the only one, um, but in certain situations, like for example, when I was climbing the stairway to heaven in Hawaii, some of the shots that I was getting, and I'll show the footage right here, but some of the so shot, blah, 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 shots, some of the shots that I was getting, hey, I didn't dog the shot. I would be orbiting my friend Kyle and going around and all of a sudden, like when I was going fast, it would just like tweak out and stabilize. And that's not what you want when you're shooting FPV. I think sometimes you can have a drone that's almost too smart for its own good. Because what I'm assuming was I was going fast enough to kind of trigger something in the drone that said it was crashing. So it tried to stabilize and it kind of just messed up that whole shot. Um, I hope it's just some little software bug and I'm assuming it is just a little software bug. Um, so I'm hoping that DJI updates that and that isn't a problem. It didn't happen to me all the time. It was pretty rare, um, but when it did happen, it was pretty frustrating. The next thing that I wanna talk about is the lack of a physical disarm switch. The next thing I wanna talk about is something that's kind of small, but really frustrating and that's the SD card spot. So the SD card spot is right here and it's so inconvenient because you have to take this like little tab off and you have to perfectly align the propellers so they're not hitting it. And then when you finally get it out, <laughs> you get it out like that 
And getting the actual SD card in is kind of hard just because there's a bunch of propellers and stuff in the way. Um, so yeah, I don't know why they put it there. I would have loved to see it like in the bottom or something, but that's just one random little frustrating thing that I would like to see literally in any different location <laughs> in the future. The last thing that I wanna talk about is something that all DJI drones have, which is geofencing. If you don't know what that is, it's basically just like a circle around different things like airports, sporting events, stuff like that, where you literally cannot take your drone off at all. And you're probably like, why the hell is this dude so mad that he can't break the rules and fly in illegal places? It's more than that. DJI does have a pretty good system for getting clearance for certain things, but that software and how it communicates with the drone sometimes has flaws. Like for example, I was shooting a project up in Aspen last year and we had clearance to fly close to the airport. We basically just detailed our plan, entered it in the software and we got clearance. So we showed up to the location and it just didn't communicate with the drone correctly so we couldn't fly the drone at all. Luckily, I had this dude um, with me also so I was able to get the shot but if I didn't have that drone I kind of just would be screwed and wouldn't be able to get the shot. I think geofencing is great in most situations but there are certain times where it just has flaws and in those situations it's just way nicer to have a drone like this. I cannot point at this drone. <laughs> It's nicer to have a drone like this where you know you can just fly. So that's it for this video. If you do have things that you think that I missed, definitely leave them down in the comments. And like I said, make sure you check out this video here because it goes over my top five best things about this drone. Like I said at the beginning, there's a lot of really good things about this drone and it's good for a lot of people. So definitely check that out. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. It really means the world to me that you guys constantly support me and watch my videos and comment and everything. So it means a lot. I'll see you guys on the next one.